Hello and welcome to Money Control. I'm your host Nikhi Mirchandani. Summer 2079 was marked by volatility due to rising inflation, interest rates, global geopolitical tensions. How will the narrative of summer 2080 differ? Will it be characterized by higher for longer interest rates, volatile bond yields, geopolitical tension, or let's just say the state elections? How will the landscape of mutual fund industry differ? Let's find that out from the CEO of the second largest AMC, Nimesh Shah, who's the managing director and CEO of ICICI Prudential AMC. Thank you so much for taking out the time and joining us here. Hi. Um, I'm going so, to start off by uh, asking you quickly about summer 2079. It has been a year of the unexpected in the stock market where you've seen a mid cap and small caps perhaps outperforming the larger counterparts. How different do you expect this summer? So uh, a lot of things in life as well as in the markets do average out. So people, uh, funds which are over the last two, three years, whatever has given a lot of return, uh, one will see them uh, balancing out in terms of if the the good thing that has happened in the last three years is that the growth in the share price has been linked to the growth in earnings. It's not that the share prices have run ahead of the earnings growth. Earnings growth is coming in and share price is reacting. So it's a very uh, healthy growth in the markets that we have seen. Mid cap, small cap profitability has also grown and that has led to a larger growth in mid cap, small cap vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, large cap. Uh, the mid cap, small caps have grown better than the large caps. So, if the profitability continues and we, it's, and now you can't talk on industries, right? It has become so company specific. Absolutely. So, our ability to understand which companies will benefit in the new India that is coming up, mm -hmm. in the new sectors which are coming up, which are the companies within the sector. When I'm talking to you, I also can't say that pharma will do well. I would rather say there will be some specific company in the pharma sector which will do well. So, that's how the, it's going to be a very stock specific year going forward while uh, markets have generally done well in the last three years. I believe uh, we, we, the conversation that we had right at the start of the year where you, you said that you know this is going to be a year where you will see sectors that have not done well typically doing well and that's perhaps also came in true right? Correct. Something like a private bank which people do not perhaps a darling of the markets with vis PSU banks which otherwise you know there was a distance from the portfolio. PSU banks have come in, come back in a big way. What's your assessment towards themes like that? COVID, you had pharma, then you had the banking. What could be the specific themes essentially from a very aerial view that you could look at? So themes wise, there are three very clear things that are happening in India. Indian banking system, because all the macros of India are well in place, yes. whether when we are looking at inflation, we look at fiscal deficit, we look at current deficit. And another thing, corporates in India are also in a very healthy stage. Yes. So you have got banks which have written off their NPS completely banks running a very healthy balance sheet, corporates are at all time low borrowing today, corporates their capacity utilizations are being used well, so they are ripe to grow their capacities further. So when corporates grow their capacities further, the banks need to lend more, right? So there is a growth expected that is to come to banks, on a clean balance sheet banks are expected to grow. So, I believe that any bank which can understand the credit risk well and is doing its business carefully will have a good run going forward. So, one clear uh, thought that we have uh, is on the banking side that banking would be a good space to invest in at the current levels. Uh, another thought that we have is that manufacturing in India and That's infra it. in India. Manufacturing in India, uh, see last 20 years we have been last 25 years we have been only taking the onslaught from china right china has been uh, at a very low price china has been exporting all across the world and indian producers have to have the had to match that or had to have the brunt of it now people who have survived competing with china for 25 years they look like prospering because what is happening is that there are a lot of inquiries coming from all across the world i am not saying a revolution has already happened Right? Mm. We have to compete. Our corporates will have to compete with other countries. Right. But definitely there are lots of inquiries for, for our uh, corporates. When we are talking to corporates, we are getting, they are getting many more inquiries today from across the world. What was supplies going from China? That China plus one strategy, I actually see it happening. So I actually see companies increasing their capacities and over a period of time, it will be reflected then in earnings. So specific uh, themes, if you ask me, one is banking, 
one is uh, manufacturing manufacturing in various sectors wherever right. we have that competence and it will be company specific and third place that we like is also the power sector or the utilities sector uh, the way the demand is increasing uh, for power we believe that if we don't ramp up the capacities quickly we again have a power deficit in the country so power companies will have to and that will again have its impact on the capital goods industries as power companies need to increase their capacities so capital goods industry power utilities manufacturing and banking that's the space that one would look at and that's also the order that you would look at order it's it's very company specific it's, it's not uh, or no you should not go by the order order can be in any ways so would you want so, to put that stack that up in the pecking order it won't uh, these are the sectors which look promising after that you need to get into company specific details right that's what we are paid for Right. That's why the customer is investing with us that within this broad sector, which are the companies that will identify. Okay, this year also we, we saw a huge amount of outperformance coming in from the real estate index put together. So something which was PSU banks, these were themes that were really not market was hoping for. It was on unexpected lines. Something like new age companies also have been in focus, right? Payton likes of Paytm, Nika, and now Mama are to the list. How do you view that now? Are you are you still going to be warning some amount of caution on these new age companies? We are managing public money. We are. I always say that we manage the common man's money. We manage the money of the retired school teacher in the small towns of India. Absolutely. So we need to be very careful the way we are investing. We should see a clear plan of them making money in the next three years. How they will execute it. The how and how much is very important. Right, it can't be a, it can't be a macro call saying that uh, we are creating a highway. A lot of cars will run on that highway, so please come and invest with us. This is going to be future. Those kind of calls I can't do with public money. If it is an institution money, which where I have got a mandate to do such things, otherwise, without clear uh, roadmap, we cannot be. So we have our research department. We have got a way of investing. We'll continue that way of investing, so it won't be based on. It will be based on how the company will make money over the next three years. So right? none so of them actually make it to the list for now. It, I would say none of them make it the list. My mandate is such that I need to see a profitability coming into those companies over a period of three years. Okay. I can't do it only based on top line growth. Fair point. Last Diwali, the talk was about rate hikes by global central banks. Of course, this Diwali, the narrative has shifted a little bit to Fed is done hiking the rates but we are staying at that higher for longer levels do you think some amount of investor caution is warranted in this scenario also are you hoping for FII's to return in a big way they've been stagnant in the markets thus far but DII story has been intact supporting the market what kind of trend are you looking forward in this summit see FII is selling right now I talked to you about banking but a, a, a reasonable correction has happened in banking so Absolutely. FII is selling always leads to some opportunities remember the old days 2011 12 13 14 whenever they used to buy markets used to go up and whenever they would sell the markets would go down so it was giving very easy opportunities so I'll always look at FII buying or selling as opportunities so we practically you said DIS count so uh, DI have now become a great counterbalance so that Absolutely. That is a comfort also today. What has happened in 21-22 when the FIS kept selling for they sold almost four to five billion dollars every month, yeah. and still the market didn't correct to that extent. Absolutely. Right? It was a 10% correction despite so much selling. Yeah. Uh, so that has created a very healthy and confident that there is no there is limited downside to the market, I'll put it that way. Because at any point of time, an Indian investor has become, if you see the behavior of the Indian investor, the when the flows come into mutual funds, as soon as the market corrects, the flows start coming into mutual funds. Right, right. Uh, the, uh, it happened in the near past also, and it has been continuously happening. So gone are the days when the investor in India will panic as soon as the market starts correcting. Right, it's not happening. It's happening the other way around. That investor has become smarter. He starts buying mutual funds, equity mutual funds, when the market's correct. So I think a lot of investor education. The congratulations to money control and all. Uh, that a lot of good investor behavior is also happening. Right, the smart guys are buying on dips. Absolutely, and also correction is serving more as an opportunity to enter into the funds that perhaps correct, one correct, could be correct. looking at, be it passive or be it active. But for summer 2018, before we move on to a bigger story there, 
which of the following themes according to you or factors according to you could be the growth drivers or will have a bearing on the markets would you think it's going to be state elections it's going to be cues from us stocks and bond markets you think it's going to be oil prices you think it's going to be earnings monetary policy please don't say everything put together just give me one out of the lot that you think will have a, a maximum we, we bearing are, on the we market. are mutual funds we are not here to predict elections we are not here the only thing that we look at is earning per share ultimately market look at the last 10 years look at the last 5 years market has followed earnings we are in a very healthy market today because market follows earnings there will be some in any market there will be some nuances about the mid cap small cap where there will be some people who are overvaluing stuff or are over excited ultimately if the earnings growth does not come those stocks get corrected look at go back to 2020 there were certain companies which were going at 50 50 pe was becoming 80 pe and people were justifying those companies even at 80 pe what has happened in the last 3 years quality at any price companies have not done that well right there has been absolutely no there may not have been severe price correction but 3 years time correction has already happened right so uh, my take is that ultimately it's only one thing that one should bother about in the 3 to 5 year space th- that is earning indian markets are very mature if the earning growth does not come no amount of nothing can uh, uh, nothing can keep the price of a share up if it is not uh, followed if the expectation is that earnings will rise and if the expectation does not come right nothing can stop from the share price from going down so there are a lot of stocks especially when you look at the fndo market Absolutely. when you look at 260000 crores of um, futures stock option futures individual stock option futures when you look at 150000 crores of uh, call options in the market open interest position call option so you are talking about 4 lakh crores between the two of them right which was hardly 150000 crores 3 to 4 years back so you are talking about such huge leverage in the market so the only risk i see in the market is the amount of leverage that the local investors have put in right so at some point of time if the on those stocks if the earnings don't come there will be a huge disappointments in those pockets right so that one Fair. should expect to uh, this year i would be very cautious on the mid cap side where there are huge open market positions because indian investors are speculating a lot on those stocks and when the expectations will not be fulfilled we'll have problems in those stocks that's precisely what i was trying to capture through the conversation you think there is some froth happening in the mid cap space precisely that's the case right now but moving it's on it's only because of the leverage positions in the market so one uh, this khelo india khelo which is going on in this country where the whole uh, stock markets have been gamified right that is what people think it's a game but when the when they lose money right it is all we have seen it earlier the same thing will happen in those speculative stocks i am not talking about the broad market i don't see that froth in the large cap i am only saying specific pockets of mid cap small caps will see corrections during this year point well taken let's move on to people actually chasing a uh, quick money the fno traders let's just put that into category 9 out of 10 traders fno traders have been making losses as per the data that we have What's going to be your piece of invi- advice coming for those traders? Do you think someone who is chasing quick money would want to eventually look at the longer term picture and start investing? He will have no option. I think that trader, because every day you get calls from various parts of India, uh, saying that they can guarantee that how you will make money, right? Those are the kind of irresponsible calls that you keep on getting, saying that option they'll tell you option trading. in smaller parts of the country there are coaching classes which have come up for how to make money out of options and traders so that's the the uh, that's the fear uh, i am very clear you can't and as you said data is screaming data is screaming that people don't make money i have seen the psychology of uh, this people i have talked to a lot of people who have dealt with uh, this one when they lose around 30% of the money right when they lose who with whatever portfolio they come up with whenever they lose around first 10 20% they still keep play along right when they lose 30 to 35% of the money that is where the alarm bangs ring that was my hard earned money is going away absolutely at that point of time they'll switch over then uh, the problem is a lot of them will switch over back to the most safest products it will be extremes when they lose money so this is what has happened 
since last 30 years. We've seen that trend playing out right now in this year itself because we've seen the losses. It's not uh, from the, I'm just looking at this volumes of speculation that is happening, the volume of leverage that is happening in the country that is not coming down. So maybe new guys are coming in. What happens? New guys come in as long as the new guys are higher than the old guys. Right. So I always feel that there is a huge space for mutual funds. And I believe a lot of people are marketing for us today because all those people who will lose money on individual stocks, which eventually come because their KYC has been done, everything has been done. So they are already in the SEBI fold. Ultimately, they'll buy mutual funds. So the young guys of today are much more smarter than what we were when we were 23. So they are already in the markets, but they are markets with stocks. At some point of time, you should be in stocks. It's a very healthy thing. You should be in stocks, Absolutely. but you should be in stocks only if you have the research capability of understanding what will be the company's earning will be going forward. That is the only thing that works. Nothing else works. So if you don't have that expertise to understand what will be the company's earning over the next two, three years, then depend on the experts. That is my limited advice to the young people. They are smarter than what we were 30 years back. But uh, if they, they should not lose money. My, my basic model is that one should not lose money. And we should not forget that first rule of not losing money. That is extremely important for the young people. It's hardened money. It's hardened money. Uh, that hardened money should not go. So the first rule is don't lose money and the second rule is remember the first, first rule. rule that's <laughs> all, huh. Okay, so let's talk about the cleaning that usually happens ahead of Diwali, right? Similar is the case also with terms of revamping of your portfolio in the run-up to Diwali. Things that have been working for you, that have been meeting the financial goals versus the ones that have not. How would you assess this and what's going to be your, uh, your advice for uh, those uh, revaluations? I've never seen it as Diwali cleaning time. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> using one th the, from last Diwali to this Diwali, one thing has changed. Debt has come under taxation. Right. right? The, even if you invest in debt funds, you, pay the, you don't pay the capital gains, you pay the marginal tax that right. you pay. So if you are in the, say, 25% tax bracket or 20% tax bracket, uh, debt will become very difficult to invest because the whole thing will get taxed. So in that scenario, one should look at multi-asset funds, which they get equity taxation and they invest in equity, they invest in debt, they invest in gold. Absolutely. So we are a firm believers. We have been, whenever I've come to the channel or whenever I go into the public fora, I always say, I used to talk about I, uh, ICC Prudential, who had become, you know, number that if we come on TV, we will only talk about one thing, balance advantage fund. That's a category that we created. Another category that we had created 21 years back was a category called as multi-asset category now. It is called multi-asset category now. When we had launched it, we used to call it ICC Prudential Dynamic Fund. Okay. What happens in that fund? You invest in all three asset classes as I was saying. And debt part, 65% is invested in equity, 25% is invested in debt, 10% is invested in gold. So with a single thing, you get an exposure to all three asset classes. We are positive on gold. As a company, we are uh, very few times in life we say that we are positive on gold. So right now we are positive on gold. Okay. So you get a gold allocation. Debt you get tax uh, with the equity taxation on the debt part, the 25% debt that is there in the products, and 65% you get on equity. And that this strategies have got such a fantastic. Ex the customer experience in these strategies has been so good. So that's why we prefer that there is some cushion. There is some, when you have got some debt and the gold part of it, there is some cushion if there is volatility because people talk very aggressively. But when they face volatility, uh, they are not Indian investors. To what extent they will be able to take volatility when there are hard earned income. So I think this products cushion the volatility quite well. So Point well taken. I also wanted to chat with you about gold and you have spoken about it already uh, in terms of uh, the allocation, of course, you're going to be giving in an allocation of 10% per se for gold. But maybe in the run up to, uh, you know, Danteras, when people are actually buying in gold jewelry, would you actually advise them to go out there and buy in sovereign gold bonds or the product thereabout in terms of funds also? What's your outlook for gold? What's going to be your advice coming in there? Uh, we are positive in gold for what is happening all across the world. Absolutely. In that background with what is happening in the US interest rates, etc. And also the Israel <coughs> Hamas, right? It's been over a month that we're looking so at the concerns. So, while uh, geopolitical, our understanding is limited that we should uh, admit. But for the economic uh, cycle that the world is in, gold is not a bad asset class to have. I don't want to get into the details of why gold. So, 5 to 10% allocation in gold should always be good.
right and uh, we can invest in the central government bonds also you get a return also but your money gets locked for a long period of time and there won't i don't think there is a reasonable liquidity in the secondary market so one is but if you have got a long term call it's a good instrument to invest in but there are etfs also gold etfs and there are funds also so whichever route that one may want to invest one can invest Okay, which is going to be more preferable amidst the three? If you have a perspective it's over the 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 number of years that one is actually looking to invest, if you've got a very long term perspective, seven eight years, you want to remain invested, then those central government bonds are good. Uh, this one because you get a two and a half percent return also on them. So that is in the ETF or if you give us money for gold funds, while you will have liquidity, but uh, you cannot, uh, you don't get a two and a half percent return on that. Central government is giving that return. So the central government bonds are good. if you have got a time span for maturity all right uh, an investment advice you think you can give or offer for someone looking to invest their diwali bonus wisely this year is it going to be a mix between multi asset funds along with uh, the balance advantage how are you looking at the uh, the split the difference between multi asset category overall say these are semi created categories the difference between multi asset category and say our balance advantage fund will be that balance advantage will be some so for right now will be around 40% invested in equities while uh, multi asset will be 65% invested in equities so it's more multi asset i would say is more aggressive than balance advantage fund so multi asset fund normally you would invest with looking expecting the full equity returns out of it because last 21 years also the, uh, we have been we have created this category 21 years back it was uh, and to last 21 years the cagr of that fund is 21% so that's the kind of past returns that have been there sure. while uh, past returns have got nothing to do with what will happen in future uh, i feel multi asset is a good category because you make money out of volatility we genuinely at icc prudential we believe volatility is good right Absolutely. volatility gives you opportunities to earn so when the markets are down and you invest more into equity right it gives you that contra behavior contra behavior makes money balance advantage has got a super track year at 10 year record right of almost giving 85% of the nifty returns while investing only 50% in equity it has given almost 85% of the nifty returns icic prudential balance advantage fund this kind but what does it do it makes money out of volatility because you go to buy equities whenever it falls when the market fell were 10 days back there was a huge amount of equity uh, that was purchased so continuously you are going against the market and going against the market in india in a volatile market like india you will keep on making that money which is completely within the mutual fund it will be tax free point well taken also you know i don't want to chat much about the competitive landscape or let's just say the growing landscape of mutual fund industry you've been one of the longest serving ceos in the history of mutual fund industry of course hmm. what's going to be your piece of advice to one of the oldest fund manager which is samir arora who started a new mutual fund and also along with that and young upstart like nathan kamat they are also coming up with funds in a big way so what's going to be your piece of advice neither within, of them within the changing landscape of mutual fund industry because you've been holding the helm for a really long time and you know you've seen the whole evolution which has happened so neither samir arora nor nitin kamat either of them don't need my advice they are super smart people and uh, samir arora is definitely not the newest fund manager in the town Actually, he was fund manager oldest, he, 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 new, he started, started fund, the mutual fund industry the so he, the oldest so he, uh, i am nobody to give advice to him he is a, and both of them are super smart people but, and but i feel that mutual fund industry we welcome them to be part of this industry but again for in samir arora's case again because uh, uh, this is a infinite potential industry the more people who come in the better it is for this industry uh, why i am saying uh, say 10 years back we were 10% of the banking industry today we are almost 24% of the banking industry right so the, there is a in 10 years we have moved from 10% of the banking industry to 24% of the banking industry say by 2030 will be one third of the banking industry right the way number of investors have come in the number of investors who are investing in equity are going to future invest in mutual funds because they are making losses over there looking at all the data points right and looking at what has happened past there is there is reasonable chance that will be one third of the banking industry but by the time banking industry will be 300 from 200 lakh crores banking industry itself will be 360 lakh crores one third of that we are talking about 100 to 120 lakh crores so from 47 lakh crores this industry over the next 7 years will be almost 
टू एंड हाफ टाइम्स ऑफ वॉट इट इज टूडे राइट और इवन इफ यू डिस्काउंट टू एंड हाफ टाइम्स डेफिनेटली डबल ऑफ वॉट वी आर टूडे सो दैट काइंड ऑफ ग्रोथ मोर प्लेयर्स कमिंग इन दे विल ओनली एक्सपैंड द मार्केट पीपल हु आर वेरी स्मार्ट ऑन द डिजिटल साइड हैव क्रिएटेड अ ब्रोकरेज बिजनेस दे दैम्स आर कमिंग इन टू म्यूचुअल फंड बिजनेस दैट इट सेल्फ इंडिकेट्स वॉट वी हैव बिन डिस्कसिंग सिंस लास्ट फिफ्टीन मिनट्स दैट पीपल हु हैव डन ब्रोकरेज बिजनेस वेरी स्मार्टली आर कमिंग इन टू ए एम सी बिजनेस वाई आर दे कमिंग इन टू ए एम सी बिजनेस बिकॉज इफ नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कस्टमर्स आर लूजिंग मनी यू नीड टू क्रिएट अनदर प्रोडक्ट वेर द कस्टमर्स मेक मनी वी आर सो हैप्पी वैन आई एम सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू आई कैन वेरी प्राउडली से दैट नाइन्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ माई कस्टमर्स हर स्टेड मी विथ मी फॉर थ्री ईयर्स हैव एंड इन्वेस्टेड इन माई इक्विटी एंड इक्विटी एंड हाइब्रिड फंड हैव मेड डबल डिजिट रिटर्न सो वी आर वेरी हैप्पी इट गिवज अस लॉट ऑफ सेटिस्फेक्शन इट गिवज अस लॉट ऑफ हैप्पीनेस दैट नाइन्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ माई कस्टमर्स have made double digit returns so we do not want to promise the moon to anybody and uh, if new people are coming in into this business it's a very very healthy sign absolutely but would you want to have a piece of advice even for the young upstart nitin kamath if not for samir or who is quite an old hand in industry i don't believe that i don't believe that either of them when i said either of them nitin kamath also knows digital very well he understands investments very well so we have to lots to learn from him are you going to change your strategy with the new entrants coming in uh, unlike what the media feels market is infinite india we are blessed with a country it is with a where the market is infinite i believe we have got only 4 crore investors in the mar- country we can get at least 10 crores uh, investors in with this people coming in so there is market for everybody all the existing players anybody sebi has created a wonderful product the regulator over the last 15 years that 16 years that i have been part of this industry regulations have become better and better for the final investor today the product is very pure why is the product growing not because we have done a great job of it because the regulations are so good that whatever i can hand on heart i can say that 100% of my products are working for the benefit of the investor right the regulations are so good so with Very the so transparent in nature so transparent what what we what you pay for is what you get Hmm. right when i have very transparently created a product you know exactly what you are paying you get uh, india growth story so i think the product is so good that uh, there is nothing that uh, there is nothing that i need to tell either of these two experts more people are coming in and we are very happy they will grow the market so there is too much growth in the market i am telling you that it will become two and a half times of what we are today by when so, that's what i'm saying by 2030 that's what i was saying by 2030 uh, if the banking industry is 360 lakh crores will be one third of that so, so we t- we do have space for more players but do you think market is now bending towards having should have rather more distributors than players to penetrate it further what's your assessment yeah distribution is something that we have to work on that that's because right. uh, is it a one basic uh, thing is that it is a it is not a otc product i am giving the analogy of a pharma industry it is a prescription product okay. right people don't and if you do an otc people are going and losing money right so while we give complete disclosure that is important it is very important to even explain people what is a benchmark right you need a you need a distributor to do yeah. that so i feel whether it is a distributor whether it is a registered investment advisor whether it is a bank it is good to have a uh, ecosystem where everybody is uh, well remunerated and we have a good healthy distribution and well regulated and well compensated both the things happen we'll have a robust distribution industry it's a good business to be in for the young people in the uh, audience they can also think of mutual fund ad- whether mutual fund distribution or mutual fund advisory as a profession as a career or investment professionals you can become a investment professional and make it a career people need advice fair point i'm just going to come back to the strategic part of the question in in terms of traditionally your fund house been more focused towards active funds rather than passive funds you think any of that would change now or you would contemplate the idea of perhaps having more passive funds we have the highest number of passive products we are as much a passive industry as we are Intent in active it is a different verticals uh as long as uh, why uh, why the growth has been very limited in the passive industry because active fund managers have given good alpha right, right. if i beat the index Absolutely. right i am very happy to state that a large percentage of our funds have beaten the index right if you have beaten the index then people will invest in the product if i don't when will passive grow really if the active fund managers are not Fail able to, to beat the perform me absolutely so since active fund managers are performing over the last 25 years absolutely right so this active industry is growing if we don't perform then passive industry will grow 
so let's the be- it's a very well regulated let the best product win what are the regulations in this country? what is happening suppose my fund does not do well right no amount of selling or marketing will be able to i will be able to sell the fund because the customer knows what he has to ask for when he's looking at a fund so without performance however good your marketing machinery would be you cannot sell a product all right i'm just going to sum up this conversation by asking you three key advices that you'd want to give out to the investors slash viewers out there before investing into mutual funds in terms of their thought process how what kind of psychology they can adapt before entering into the industry three piece advice on that see one thing you should be able to trust the brand with which you invest in because okay. when you are managing we are also very conscious when we are managing other people's money it has to be the transparency and the ethical levels of the organizations have to be very very clear Fair. so one of the whenever you are giving your money to somebody else you should have the assurance or you should uh, look out for the kind of people who are managing the money whether you can trust the while the regulations are well in place whenever you are giving money it uh, the people should be trustable that you should be able to trust those people second thing don't depend only on past performance Absolutely. right in fact past performance look at with some skepticism past performance indicates that we know our job right and i am saying when my past performance is very good so that it is not only past performance whether you can trust the people whether what is the outlook of that industry what is the outlook going forward you are going to don't come into mutual funds only because past performance looks good if large cap is given average returns and mid cap is given heavy returns it does not mean that you are that it means actually that the mid caps are already run up absolutely then that may not be the time to invest in a mid cap fund just because mid cap fund has given a very good return in the last 3 years does not mean that you should invest gotcha. in my mid cap return i would urge the investors to invest more in large cap this one second thing always uh, third ladder uh, third thing is that uh, too much aggression in investment you should have if you are getting too much aggressive or co- too concentrated or direct stocks please have the knowledge before you invest because without knowledge when people hear somebody you take advice from somebody and you start investing normally it has very few people have made money by that all right mr shah we're just going to leave it at that and thank you for taking out the time to join us in the studio thank you All right with this it's a wrap we extend our warm diwali wishes to our viewers out there may the festival of lights bring joy prosperity and happiness to your lives goodbye from us but don't go anywhere else we stay tuned into more exclusive interviews coming in from money control